Meet the hyperaccumulators. What you're looking at are X-rays of plants that grow in soils laden with heavy metals like nickel, zinc and arsenic. It's amazing that plants like these exist at all. Heavy metals are toxic to humans, plants and animals. But some plants have adapted to live with these. And for a plant nerd like me, this is a fascinating story. Anthony von der Ent is studying hyperaccumulator plants at the University of Queensland. So what is a hyperaccumulator plant? So a hyperaccumulator plant is a plant that is able to concentrate very high concentrations of a specific element, say nickel or zinc or manganese, into its living shoots and leaves. So hyperaccumulators have evolved uh, very specific mechanisms to avoid toxicity that affects normal plants like crops. Anthony's trekked around the globe exploring heavy metal hotspots. What was it like visiting New Caledonia? Well, for anyone who likes plants, New Caledonia is uh, the place to be, really. Uh, it has over 3,000 plant species on the island, of which more than 90% is endemic. Perhaps the most spectacular hyperaccumulator in the world is a, is a tree called Picanandra cuminata, which is a, a large tree, up to 30 meters. And it has a, a sapper latex that is blue-green in color and has up to 25% nickel in it. So it's perhaps the most metallic tree or plant known in the world. Uh, and it's extremely rare and it occurs in rainforests in New Caledonia. And there's also a tree in Borneo that we've discovered that has 20% nickel in its sap and it is a translucent green color. And it's really extreme as well. So in a way, the geology of a landscape determines the plants that can live there. Absolutely, yeah. And hyperaccumulators are generally rare because they are restricted to such outcrops of mineralized soils. So would it be true to say that these sort of plants occur in places which are ideal for mining as well? Precisely, yeah. So hyperaccumulated plants grow in, in mining targets uh, that are rich in metals. Uh, it's not only overseas these plants are found. Australia has its share of hyperaccumulators. So what do we have in here? So a whole collection of Australian native hyperaccumulator plants. These look like legumes to me. Uh, they are. So this is a Neptunia, which is a legume. It hyperaccumulates selenium. And then behind me, we have a plant that hyperaccumulates manganese and cobalt. It's called Gossia. And over here, we got a species called Crotillaria from central Queensland, which accumulates zinc. And they're standing in saucers, which yep. stops anything running out. That's right, yeah. So we don't want to lose the metal that we dose to them. So we have solutions. Uh, in this case of zinc, so there's a 100 ppm or milligrams per litre in here, uh, which we add to the sources incrementally, so to expose the plant to, in this case, uh, zinc. So you know that they accumulate certain heavy metals. What is the purpose of that knowledge? Um, so this particular species comes from around Dougal River in central Queensland, um, and it grows on zinc outcrops. So the idea being is that we grow these plants on the, on the waste of the mine, uh, where they could stabilize the surface, but at the same time accumulate zinc that is residual in, in that waste. So they, they have a, another purpose other than stabilizing the soil. Yeah. And how, how could you see this being applied? Um, it's a process we call phytomining, in which we essentially use these what we call metal crops. So crops that accumulate metal. Um, and we periodically harvest these. They will re-sprout back, the perennial plants and that biomass we can then process to extract zinc in this case. So in, in terms of the maturity of this research, where, where do we stand? We're pretty much at the start. So Australia is extremely biodiverse, over 20,000 plant species, but we only know of a handful of hyperaccumulator plants. And some of these plants are, are actually quite rare yeah. in the wild. Yes, a lot of the hyperaccumulators only grow at an outcrop where the soils are very particularly high in a particular metal, uh, like nickel or zinc or copper. Uh, and you would only find them on that outcrop. So many species of hyperaccumulators are, are hyperendemics, so they only occur on one location. That sounds really difficult for that plant because the only place that they grow is the most desirable place to mine as well. Exactly, so that's a conflict there. So for us, it's often, a, I guess, a race between mining companies wanting to mine a surface outcrop uh, of a metal and us trying to find these hyperaccumulator plants and try to, um, to save some seeds or some plants that we dig out uh, to, to keep them, basically.
So what species have you got here? So there's two species here. One is heartleaf poison, which is this uh, pretty one with orange flowers, uh, and Gastrobium bilobum. Uh, and the other one is Gastrolobium pervifolium, which is the one with the narrow leaves here. Now, these accumulate fluorine, which makes them really poisonous. Correct, yeah. So these uh, accumulate fluoride in the leaves and they make fluoroacetate, which is a metabolic poison. And would that be those little droplets there? Would they be droplets of poison? Yes, that contains fluoride. <laughs> those little droplets uh, that the plant excretes. And are these seedlings of, of gastrolobium? Because that looks like sand plain soil from WA as Exactly, well. yeah. So that's the natural type of soil they grow in. And these are some of the seedlings that we, uh, we're trying to, uh, to germinate. So then in these trays, we, uh, we dose fluoride in solution uh, at different levels to look at the amount of uptake of fluoride into the, uh, into the plants. So what is the, the object of growing these plants here? So fluoride can be an issue in some types of wastewater, say from the coal industry or from other industries. So some types of wastewater contain fluoride, uh, which is uh, undesired as a pollutant. So the thinking is that we could cultivate these plants to, uh, to extract the fluoride from that wastewater as a means of remediating uh, contaminated water. There's a strong case for preserving these sorts of plants. Yes, I think so. Uh, Hypercumulated plants, if you identify them, they are uh, valuable resources uh, that can then be used in rehabilitation of mining sites or other contaminated areas. What do you think the future holds for you and this kind of research? I'm hoping that we can upscale uh, what we're doing. So a lot of it, uh, of our work is in the lab scale uh, or small applications in the field. But I would really like to see full-scale application of phytomining uh, happening in Australia. Mm -hmm.